I've been what you would call a lukewarm Christian for most of my life. A lukewarm Christian is someone who believes in God but chooses to live life on their own terms. They may even go to church. In the back of their mind, they know that God requires certain behaviors to be upheld, but they continue to live their life the way they want without a though to God or the consequences. In fact, the mantra of the satanic church is do what thou wilt. This world has slowly transformed into this principle of do as you please. It has removed God in every facet of our lives, and this world is going to suffer devastating consequences because of that. The problem with being a lukewarm Christian or a non-believer is that the further and further you get away from God, the more and more you lose. Living your life the way you want to live without regard for God's commandments is sinful and carries consequences. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Like many others, I got married and had children, but as I neared middle age, my marriage fell apart. I divorced, and my family was broken up. As a result, I suffered great heartbreak, and it caused me to question my life. This questioning led to a spiritual awakening with odd physical symptoms and a strong realization of God. I sought the advice of spiritual advisors and was told to meditate. So I did, and that's when things got much, much worse. For the next 10 years, I suffered mysterious illnesses that were never diagnosed, sleep paralysis, and demonic attacks at night. These attacks were even experienced by my children. Our house was straight out of a horror movie. During those years, I tried everything to rid myself of these terrible attacks. I delved into New Age practices as a way to handle this myself. I prayed occasionally, but the attacks didn't stop. Finally, one day I asked God why these things were happening to me, and I was told that I needed to pray without ceasing, so that's what I did. After a while of praying night and day, I had visions of Jesus coming to my house, and the attacks stopped. Not only was I delivered, but my children were too. Since then, I've deepened my faith and my relationship with God. As a newborn Christian, I started crawling and then learned to walk in my faith. My relationship with God and Jesus has given me a peace and comfort I've never known. My life has been completely transformed. I no longer have the sinful habits I had before. I am no longer fearful of anything. I don't worry about world catastrophes and disasters anymore because I have Jesus in my life. I know he will provide for me and protect me like he did before. He is my rock and strength. We must not be lukewarm nor non-believers. It's dangerous. The Bible tells us how we must live and we must obey God commands. Don't let others' opinions sway your love for Christ. Don't be afraid of losing friends or family members. If they don't approve of you following God, they don't belong in your life anyway. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 to 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. We must seek God first. We must seek Jesus for salvation and deliverance. The only way to get to the Father and to salvation is through Jesus. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. My love for Christ is immeasurable. I love God and Jesus so much and have so much appreciation for what they've done for me and my children. I want others to feel the love that I have for God and Jesus. Jesus died brutally on the cross for our sins. I would give my life for Jesus just like he did for me. It brings tears to my eyes to see scoffers and mockers of Christ. 
To me, it's like a parent who loves their child, would give their own life for their child, and their child is selfish and ungrateful. That child turns right around and spits in their parent's face. I see no appreciation, no respect for Jesus amongst many. We must revere Jesus and be thankful for his sacrifice and God's mercy. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, repent and call on him now. He will answer you. Don't wait another day. The only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. We will all have to stand in front of God on Judgment Day. Don't be fooled, that day is indeed coming. And you don't want to be the one who God casts into outer darkness and the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. The time to repent is now. All you have to do is believe in Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior in order to be saved. Accept Jesus as your Savior in your heart and stop your sinful ways. Read the Bible to learn about God's commandments. You have no excuse. You can use the internet to research the Word of God. It's never been easier. Don't make the mistakes I made. I wish I had seen the light sooner, but I'm so grateful I can bring you this message now. Don't wait until it's too late. No one knows when our time here on earth is over. Tomorrow could be your last day.